Hello group. Here. I've been playing around with uh, Stellarium and I think I hit on something that works pretty good. It's uh, maintained its speed, its snappiness while turning on uh, the features that I like. So I thought I'd go through some of my settings and then kind of show you how I use Stellarium. So here we go. I'll fire it up on this machine. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go through all of the settings. And, uh, probably the easiest way for you guys, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it to keep the video short, is just you can pause the video while I'm uh, uh, at each screen, and then you can see what, what my settings are. So we'll start up in the uh, ocular settings here. And in general, I leave whatever was default. I haven't touched any of these. For eyepieces, I haven't touched any of these because I'm not an eyepiece guy anymore. For lenses, I don't want to mess around with lenses. Uh, I will mess with my scope settings and my sensor settings to get what I want. But if you feel that uh, you want to go this way, here's where you would enter like your Barlow's or your focal reducers in here. Here's the important part. So here you'll see I have all of my cameras. I've got my uh, DS 3.2, bin 1 and bin 2, because I don't want to uh, um, I don't want to not have the uh, and I'll show you this, is when we get to the actual uh, planetarium screen, it will show you the pixel density. And when, you're, when you set it up for bin 1 and bin 2, it'll give you the size of the, uh, how much area the, each pixel is grabbing. This will let you see my pages. So this is bin 1 for the DS 2.3. This is bin 2. These are the settings. The 287, these are the settings. The 432, the tech, DS10 tech. Now the C and the tech are going to be the same. So you can use these settings. This is bin 2. And what you'll see is the pixels go down and the pixel width goes up. This is the 16C tech and the 16C uh, or M would be the same settings. This is bin 1, bin 2, and then I have a uh, 5D Mark IV which I won't show you. Now I have my telescope set up so I've got the first one is my Raza then my newt and my uh, C14 at F7 and my C14 at F11. So I have all of these at the top three. And then if I ever wanted to run uh, some lenses, I have some of those set up here. So I could run my one of my uh, tech cameras on an adapter that I have that will let me run or attach a Canon lens to the adapter and then I could still use Stellarium for that. Now we'll go to location, location, location for Stellarium is very important it's just like your mount is ver when you set your mount up. The, it needs to know where you are so that you get an ac accurate representation of the sky. So I have an app on my phone that gives me uh, uh, my longitude and latitude. And I entered that here and then I gave it a name. So that's it for this window. 
time and date is not important. The sky and viewing options window will do next. So for sky, I believe these are the defaults, but you can just check. For uh, solar system objects, these are also the defaults. For deep sky objects, these are also the defaults except for the sliders. And I've moved my sliders accordingly. So the top one is, uh, it's pretty far right and the one below it is kind of in the middle. And I, I like that for my uh, information that you're seeing here, like the Saturn, Nebula, Venus. As you zoom in, you start getting more data, and that's what these do. For markings, I have the uh, equatorial grid checked, the galactic equator checked, the meridian checked, the cardinal points checked, and these are the cardinal points. This is the meridian here, so if I click on that, you'll see it disappear. See, it's gone. And this line here is the galactic equator. And I use that sometimes. I, I have a hard time finding <laughs> the Milky Way. So I use that, that line to help me figure that out. Uh, landscapes, I'm just using the one, the generic landscape. Uh, none of the sky lures have I changed. And then the survey, I'm not going to click on that. Oh, I thought I didn't click on that, but I did. That loads all of the survey data that's av available to you. And I have not done anything over and above. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing else checked. Uh, but if you have a, uh, an atlas that you would like, you can just check that off here. Uh, the configuration window. I have all checked for the object information. For extras, I have... Uh, the first one checked, then show constellation boundaries, show electric grid, show centering button, show night mode button, show nebula background button. That's a key. That's this stuff. Uh, show full screen button, show quit button, and use buttons background are checked. For time, I'm just using the defaults. For tools, these are pretty much everything that was uh, standard on the load. I don't really use the scripts, so it's just a default load. Plugins, I have uh, the one thing I did do was turn telescope so it loads at start, then I can use my mounts with uh, the program. And this is where any changes that you make, you, oops, sorry. You would have to go to main and then save the changes here, um, which is kind of a weird way to do it. But any change you make, if you don't save it, it, it gets lost and you'll have to re, uh, re check everything. So you want to make sure that after you've made all your changes that you save those changes. So what I like to do is after my mount is uh, aligned and it's rearing to rock, rock and roll, I then would connect to the mount and uh, you would go into the config window, go to plugins, and then you would select your mount and then start it. And that connects the Stellarium to the mount. And what that will do is this button here would, would go on. But I don't have any, any mount connected, so it's not going to do anything. Uh, so depending on uh, 
my driveway and your driveways or your observatories, the way they look will not be the same. So I'm always starting from the north. And uh, let's go to the cat's eye. So I would select the cat's eye. And then I would select the image center frame. And what that's going to do is it's going to zoom me in to, uh, depending on which scope. So right now I have the Melcam DS10 bin 1. I'll go to bin 2. You can see what happens to the, the scale, the pixel scale. That's bin 1. And I'm using the Newt. There's the Newtonian. There's the Celestron at F7. And this is the Celestron at F11. And this would be the Raza. So that's my field of view for these objects. So if I wanted to go to this object, I would just hit Control-1, and that, then the mount would move to it. But if I decided that uh, I really don't want to hang here, you know, that's not what I want to see tonight, I would zoom back out by uh, selecting the image sensor, and that will zoom me back out again. And then I'll just start dragging around looking at the sky. And I, I like, let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I would then control uh, F1, and the mount would move. So I just love how snappy this is. This is gorgeous. Here's the elephant trunk. Let's go to the elephant trunk, see what the elephant trunk is. So there's the elephant truck. Now I'm at F11. This is F7 with the 14. This is my newt. There's the elephant trunk. And you can see the red right there. And this is the Raza. That's the field of view for the Raza right there. So I can back out, get back to where I wanted to go. I can also just zoom in a little bit if I wanted to see a little more data, which would be this. So here's the fetus nebula. I don't think there's much to see here. We'll zoom in. Yeah, there it is. So that's the fetus nebula. And what I really like about this program is how fast it is. I mean, this thing flies. And it stays this fast even when the scope is connected because you're not moving the scope to see this stuff. You would move the scope after you decide that you want to see it in the field of view. So uh, there you have it. My settings for Stellarium to keep the speed up. And there's enough information in this just zooming around here that you can get a good handle on what's in the area. And if you just want to, if you think there's a little more to it, you can just zoom in a little bit and then scroll around. But you cover a lot of sky quickly. One more thing to show, and that's uh, the astronomical calculations. <clears throat> so these are the planet positions. And the one I really want to show, because this was brought to my attention, is uh, what's up tonight. So if I go to planetary nebulas, you can see it's listing all of the planetarium nebulas. Let's go to the cat's eye. So I just double click on the cat's eye. There it is. I'll zoom into it, and there's the there you go. <laughs> this is gorgeous. I love this. And you can change your, uh, uh, what shows up in the list is based on these settings. So it's in the evening, uh, 14th magnitude would be the, the uh, you're expanding the list uh, by upping the magnitude. And you can have uh, limited angular size. You can uh, do all kinds of things with this. You got interstellar objects, you got the Oort cloud, 
I mean, this is just, I never knew this was in this program until uh, I think it was Bob mentioned it. So this is uh, quite the little application. Um, and if you guys are using Stellarium, I uh, hope you picked up a few hints. So that's all I have for this video. We'll see you in the group.